إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد يقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam We begin by greeting each one of us with a greeting of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As we are aware of the events around us and the upcoming, or we are in what's the so-called festive season and the supposed New Year festivities, we as Muslims should be reminded that we have a deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with. And the normal sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when we don't appreciate what we have and what we've been gifted with, then that gift is taken away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah Al-Anfal, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُمْ مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنْفُسِهِمْ When Allah, when the, the ni'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, when Allah has gifted us with beautiful gifts, and we change for the worse, then those gifts, we don't get to benefit from them. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ That our situation as an ummah will not change unless we make a change. And the ulama explain in the tafsir of this verse that this change works both ways, in a positive way and in a negative way. So if we make a positive change, then we will have a positive change. And if we make negative changes, then the outcome will be a negative outcome. And our situation as an ummah will not improve, but instead will get worse. And I'm sure each and every one of us is witnessing this. We see this on a daily basis. We cry as an ummah on the one hand of what's going on around the globe to our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for victory. We question the other leaders around the world. We question the other Muslim countries around the world or the Muslim armies and we say, where are you? Why are you not coming to the aid of our brothers and sisters all over the world? Why is there so much oppression against the Muslims in many parts of the world? Where is the victory that Allah has promised us? But Allah reminds us in the Quran that victory comes with a condition. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, In tansurullaha 
yansurkum. That if you give victory to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will give you victory. And this is how the Muslims in the early days, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in the time of the Sahaba and those after them, that is how they were victorious. Because they first, full, they fulfilled the first part of the condition. The deal we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we have to give his deen victory. Before we gain victory as an ummah. So we can protest as much as we want and we can boycott as much as we want. But sometimes, you know, the, the issue of protest is a completely different, prote uh, completely different discussion or boycott, or whatever it may be. But if we in that protest and we're not even performing our salah when the time of salah comes and, and comes in and you know enters and leaves, what are we protesting about? What victory are we trying to achieve? And these are questions we need to ask ourselves. And the ulama explain, uh, you know, when, when every time when the situation around the world gets gets worse. They, use, they explain and they say, if we as an Ummah cannot give up the evils that we are doing in different parts of the world, then we as an Ummah collectively will suffer. So, for example, our brothers and sisters in Gaza or in Palestine or, or in Kashmir or in, in, you know, in different parts of the world, they are suffering because of the sins that we commit. In. If we cannot stay in a house which is mortgage-free, if we cannot stay away from interest-bearing transactions, if we cannot stay away from cheating one another in business, if we cannot stay away from lying to one another and ripping each other off, then what victory are we trying to achieve? How are we helping our brothers and sisters across the globe? You know, we spread pictures and, and messages on, on these different social media platforms Yes, we're sad about the situation, but what are we doing about it ourselves on a personal level? On this fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminds us about in the Quran. That if we as a Muslim ummah want victory, and we know victory is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No ceasefire, no president of whatever country or king, whatever will give us victory. Victory is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we want this nasr, we have to ensure that we abide by the conditions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Qur'an. We follow the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, there will be no victory. We, the, the, the problems that we find ourselves in as an ummah are a direct cause of us straying away from the deen, straying away from the Qur'an, straying away from the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will try to find every other solution of trying to solve the problems we find ourselves in, except for the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us about, except for the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why is that? It's as if, for example, we're ill and we go to the doctor and the doctor gives us, prescribes us a medication and that medication is known to be effective for that particular condition you have. And you refuse to take that medica you refuse to take the medication and you try all other different things he says if you take these tablets one tablet three times a day for seven days you'll be fine after that inshallah but then we start you know maybe we say if i go and do if i go and swim in the sea for example for one hour a day then i'll be i'll be better or i go and smoke something or take some something else except for what the doctor has prescribed for you, which is known to be effective, which has been tried and tested throughout history. So the fact that we are veering away from the deen, we all have a part to play, and we should all be guilty of what our brothers, for example, in Gaza are facing. Because of us, for example, not performing our salah. For example, for us, you know, buying houses or mortgages, haram mortgages that is, or you know, dealing in all sorts of th things which are haram, taking drugs, stealing, gambling, dealing in drugs for example. So these are, this is reality, it's a fact check. And I'm sure a lot of us don't like to hear this, but it's a fact. 
This is mentioned in the Quran. This cannot be refuted. So we need to wake up and understand that this ummah, for example, as a, as a Muslim ummah, we are on the tail end of things in terms of technology, in terms of advancements, in terms of, you know, we are being <coughs> stamped upon. We are not progressive as an ummah. We are disunited. We cannot unite over simple things. You know, for example, in, in a house you will find brothers fighting over, you know, a football team because they differ on the type of, or the, on the football teams they support. And, and there's a big, you know, there's chaos because of that. If we cannot unite in our own homes, we cannot unite as families, as brothers and sisters, as siblings, how are we supposed to unite at a community level? How are we supposed to unite on a national level? You find ourselves lacking in politics, for example, laws all over the world being made specifically targeting Muslims, but we find ourselves not unable to do anything about that. It's because we're not progressive as an ummah. We're not united as an ummah. And all of these concepts are mentioned in the Quran. Follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow his sunnah for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't unnecessarily clash with one another and dispute with one another. Otherwise your strength will be wiped away. You'll have no wind left. You'll have no clout left. You'll have no authority. And this is exactly what we are facing as an ummah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the understanding of the importance of giving his deen the victory so that we can attain victory. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له. Beloved brothers, in continuing our discussion, we as an ummah, and inshallah we will mention it in the du'as at the end of the khutbah, we need to stand united. This is something which is very important. And we should, especially in times like these, especially in times that we find ourselves in. But the question is, united upon what? We need to be stand united upon, first of all, on things that we all agree as an ummah, which is, for example, the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we can establish these two things, and we can all agree on these two things as an ummah, we need to overlook the minor differences that we may have, because each and every one of us will have differences. We need to overlook the minor differences that we have as an ummah, and unite, because if we don't unite, we will never be able to stand firm, to stand upright against the enemy. Because they will prey on our weaknesses. We know that, you know, shaitan's policy, the devil's policy is to divide and conquer, divide and rule. And that's exactly how we've been ruled over. That's exactly how we as an ummah have been torn apart because of our divisions. and. We've been preyed upon. We've been preyed upon because of our own foolishness as an ummah. Because we disunite and fight over small, little, minor things. And this is something we as an ummah need to understand. We need to wake up, look around. Not fight one another, but support one another. None of us is perfect. But if someone is making strides for the good, then we need to try and back that person up. We need to understand, for example, we look at how the, the non-Muslims use the tools available to oppress us. 
to go against us as Muslims. For example, they will pass laws in parliament or wherever to specifically targeting the Muslims. And that's the way things are done in these parts of the world. So we need to counter those measures. And we need to play them at their own game and try and either object to those things or also pass laws which support the Muslims, for example, and ensure and try our best to, you know, to have a strong voice in politics. Because this is very important, brothers and sisters. We need to have a firm voice as an Ummah. We need to have a firm voice in, for example, spreading media, the truth about Islam, the truth about what's happening around the world. We are lacking gravely in these aspects. And this is why we looked down upon, or some of the reasons why we looked down upon, and we oppressed, because we don't have a voice. We are disunited. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us. Allahumma wahid sufuhu al-Muslimin. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin fi kulli makan ya Rabb al-Alami. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin fi kulli makan ya Rabb al-Alami. Allahumma a'is al-Islam wa al-Muslimin fi kulli makan ya Rabb al-Alami. Allahumma shfi mardana wa marda al-Muslimin ya Rabb al-Alami. Allahumma ahdi shababana. Allahumma ahdi shabab al-Muslimin. اللهم اهدنا إلى العمل بكتابك وسنة نبيك يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا اللهم لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وأصلح أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا اللهم اجعل هذا البلاد اللهم اجعل اللهم اجعل هذا البلاد آمنا مطمئنا اللهم انصرنا اللهم انصرنا اللهم انصرنا على عدانا اللهم من أرادنا وأراد المسلمين بسوء فأشغله بنفسه واجعل كيده في نحره يا ذا الجلال والإكرام إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أقيم الصلاة يا رحمكم الله